Hi, Brian Bush, Top Crop Alliance. Coming from a cornfield today. So several questions have been coming about yellowing crops, um, corn, soybeans, and in particular, um, what's going on? So this field exhibits the two things I'm seeing a lot. But I think I want to kind of walk through a little bit what I'm seeing, what's going on. So um, as you can kind of see behind me here, pretty common seeing the situation here. Lower leaves on these corn plants are yellow. With the lowest leaves, tops are still fairly green, looking okay. But I mean, why are we yellow down here? Um, two reasons. Number one, dry weather. So I dug up a plant here just to kind of show you. This one's been kind of a, a yellow. So you, you see the yellow leaves there. But also, look at that root system. That's a nice root system. No real concerns about compaction. No real concerns about um, root restrictions. So it's not a root issue. It's not a planting issue. In some cases, a lot of this, it's just been the dry weather. To which you say, yeah, Brian, it's been dry. We know that. Well, as soils get dry, sometimes the nitrogen we put right here, 15 inches away from the row, stays there. It doesn't make its way to the corn rows on the other side. So it's still highly concentrated right here. We need some moisture to diffuse it, to move it with mass flow to the corn roots. The other thing too, it can be dry weather. It can be um, potassium deficiency. So the potassium kind of gets tied up, especially on field edges, where maybe we don't spread enough into the ditch to get a uniform spread on the edge of the field. So we get more yellowing that way. Um, so that can be part of it too. So both of those things get fixed with rainfall. The, the, the potassium will come more available as those clay soils kind of release, open up a little bit more, let, let the roots access the, the potassium. The nitrogen will move more. Um, without, the, without rainfall, it can be rough. So we need some rainfall to kind of move that nitrogen around. Number two, and probably 2023, one of the bigger issues we've seen here is cover crops. The cover crops this year, it, with a dry May, especially the things that weren't killed off in March or in April, where we had some green going into planting, they kind of suck more of the water out of that topsoil. So the soil got dry. Therefore, we kind of kept the, the, the seedlings, the plants, a little bit drier. Um, I don't have the best example in this field, um, but definitely where I've got areas of thick cover versus thin cover, it's night and day difference. So if you had cover crops or your neighbor did, and you see parts of the field that look really green and healthy versus kind of paler behind a little bit, go out and see how thick the cover crop is there. That's probably telling you a lot of the story there. This cover crops took that extra moisture from that root zone, which kind of delayed the plants kind of taking off and, and growing as well. So it's gonna rain, it's gonna rain. It's going to rain. If we say it enough times, it's going to happen, right? So stay tuned, though. Um, any questions you have, feel free to reach out to me. Um, the potassium thing, we're seeing that on corn. We're seeing on soybeans as well. So especially on field edges, um, areas where maybe we don't have quite the fertility levels, it shows up worse. Compaction shows up worse. Uh, but in particular, I'm not seeing compaction in a lot of places. What I am seeing, though, is dried soils um, that are keeping, that are kind of shrinking up, pulling that, pulling that soil together not releasing the potassium we need, or not letting the nitrogen flow freely across that whole uh, 30 inches between the rows. Hope that helps. Reach out anytime.